we have developed the MYP report cards in order to provide the most detailed feedback to parents. Um, the rubrics allow you to have an open conversation with your son or daughter. Um, open conversation with your son or daughter about their strengths and areas for improvement and to set specific attainable goals. So the agenda for today, you'll see that I'll go over the report card timeline so you have an idea of how the report cards are rolled out and also how um, student-led conferences uh, roll out. We'll look at some the changes to the report card. There is one change to the report card if you were at my session earlier in the year about understanding MYP assessment. Um, I did go over that briefly. We'll look at kind of the subjects and criteria, then we'll look at the different progress reports and the general grade boundaries, and then I have an activity to hopefully help you understand a little bit more and have that discussion with your son or daughter. So the report card timeline, you can see that progress number one is the one that will be coming out next Friday, so that's November the 6th. And on that report card, and we'll go over this in detail in the presentation, you will see um, a rubric that is highlighted and an ATL grade. And that will be emailed, the highlighted rubric will be emailed by your advisor teacher. And then there will also be, you can access PCR to have the ATL grade um, show as well on an official transcript from PCR. Progress number two report card, will be out in February, February 12th. And at this time, you'll get a highlighted rubric again, a one to seven level for your child's courses, and an ATL grade and an advisor comment. So you can see that there's a little bit more information there in the February report card. And the final report card, uh, sorry, that should say July, um, will be out on Tuesday, July 5th, and it will have a one to seven level and an ATL grade and an advisor comment, and that is just the PCR transcript you get in July. There, will no, there won't be an email home from the advisor teacher with the rubric report card. Uh, Parents, teacher, student interviews happen in November and April, and those dates are posted on the calendar, uh, so you can re refer to the calendar for those dates. It's approaches to learning grade, and we'll go over exactly what that is and what it looks like. Approaches to learning. Yeah. So the changes to the report card, approaches to learning grade. So this year, instead of the effort grade, your child will have an approaches to learning grade. And uh, this will uh, have three specific learning skills that they'll be assessed on. The grades will provide a profile of each student's development in their organization, collaboration, and self-improvement skills. Each teacher will provide a judgment of your child's development in each of these areas. Students will also have frequent opportunities to self-assess their progress against each of these areas. So um, the a ATL uh, skills, approaches to learning skills, are IB. So they're in all three programs. And we've also done a lot of work at, at in-house at the school through Mike Moore, and he has a session coming up as well. Um, and these just give you more detailed information about your child's organization, collaboration, and reflection skills than our effort grades did. So it's going to give you way more detail about where they are in those three skill areas. So as you can see, on the report card, these are, these are the terminology that we'll use to assess the organization, collaboration, and reflection. So requiring support is students are introduced to the skill, can watch others performing it, and require reminders and or support in order to execute the skill. So they're not quite able to do it on their own yet. They really need the support. Um, they need reminders from parents and teachers um, in order to complete that skill. Emerging, students copy others who use the skill and use the skill with a scaffolding and guidance. So now they're watching others do it and then they'll follow that, but they're not quite that independent learner yet on those skills. Using, students employ the skill confidently and effectively so they can demonstrate it. Modeling, students can show others how to use the skill and accurately assess how effectively the skill is used. So you can see now that it's really clear on the report card when the students get um, that feedback from their teachers on organization, collaboration, or reflection, 
where they're at. And all of this information will be in that rubric report card that gets emailed home by your advisor teacher. And these are the three skills, so organization, and you can see the descriptors, and it's attached to a learner profile attribute, collaboration, reflection. I'll just give you a moment to read those. So it's very clear what that feedback is from the teacher now, where with the effort grade, you used to see an E, an S, a U, or an I. Um, and it wasn't very clear what we were looking at or what that feedback to the student was in order for them to pro progress. So now it's very clear. Students have seen this. Students have seen the requiring support, emerging, using, and modeling. They're aware of the terminology, and they know that there's the, been this change as well. So students also um, have been working with this so that they understand when that report card goes home what that means. So progress number one, as I said, is a highlighted rubric. Progress number one, highlighted rubric, and ATL grade. So on the progress number one, you will see um, this snapshot doesn't show it, but you will see, obviously, the name of the course and the teacher's name. You'll also see by term um, uh, curriculum focus, so you know what your son or daughter has been working on. And then, as I said, the progress number one now, you will see the approaches to learning skills with um, the letter. So are you... Uh, e or M. Remember, if you see an E, that's changed. That doesn't stand for the excellent anymore that it did for the effort grade. It's emerging. So there will be a bit of having to refer back to that definition um, because that is the only term that's using the same letter. Um, you, again, it doesn't mean unsatisfactory. It means using. So there's a bit of a shift there that um, we just want you to make you aware of so that you do understand that doesn't mean um, that they're unsatisfactory. It means they're using that skill. And uh, the de descriptions, as I said, will be attached to the report card. If necessary, there will be an additional comment from the teacher. So this may be if uh, your son and daughter maybe uh, is struggling with organization, the teacher might have an additional comment there to make it very clear about what they need to do to improve in that area. Or maybe they struggled with one certain unit in math, and so the teacher wants to be very clear about what that unit is and the fact that they should probably be uh, refreshing their memory on that unit as they move on along the year. If you don't see a comment here, that's okay. So it's only if necessary. If required, will the teacher have a comment? Yes. For, sorry, can, can you repeat your question? So that these requiring support. Yeah. So um, in the previous slide, you can see here the R means requiring support, E emerging, U using, and M modeling. they need support, meaning that they need more improvement. So meaning that um, I may be able to be organized only if Miss Cauldron reminds me to hand in my assignment, take my backpack to school, put my stuff in my locker. So I need support still. I can't do it independently yet. 
modeling would be I'm an independent learner and I'm able to meet deadlines, I'm organized, I'm able to do it. Using is that they do it confidently, uh, but they might need the occasional reminder. And emerging is that they're copying someone else. So maybe I see Miss Cauldron handing in her assignment and then I'm like, oh, right, my assignment. Oh, I forgot it. And so that reminds me. Yeah. So with this report card as well, you will get for each subject area the rubrics that the students get assessed on. So you will have, it's, a, it's quite a lengthy report card you get emailed home. Uh, we recommend not printing it because I think it's 52 pages. But it shows up really nice to read. Um, you do need to use Google Chrome in order for it to load properly. So that's just um, a tip there as well. Um, but it gives you the most detailed information that we could provide to you about your child. Um, and that's because the rubrics that they're assessed on, the students know the language, they work with the language, and now they're getting the feedback with that language as well. So this is really clear feedback from the teachers in each of their courses. Um, you'll note for progress number one, not all criteria will be highlighted. So at this time, we've only been at school for just over three months, and teachers haven't had time to assess every criteria. Each course should have at least two criteria assessed. So you should see at least yellow highlighting for two criteria. LEAP electives will also be um, assessed on the approaches to learning skills. So again, you will see uh, those letters assessing their organization, collaboration, and reflection. Again, if a comment is needed, the teacher will provide one. And that's the same with life and learning skills. The only difference is that you will see a curriculum focus for life and learning as well. Any questions about progress one? So progress two report card has a highlighted rubric, a one to seven level, an ATL grade, which is the approaches to learning grade, and an advisor comment. So now it's a bit different. We're building on the first report card and you're getting more information about your child's performance. So again, although this says term one, because this is a snapshot of the new report card, it will be a term two curriculum focus. So it will be a different focus for each term, obviously. And now you will see in this section here, the one to seven level. So the overall level your child has received in that subject area. And again, the letters representing what they received on the approaches to learning skills. So again, we're showing you, hopefully that there's been progression. And if there hasn't been progression, then again, that informs you again that we need to follow up and have more discussions about your son or daughter's performance around organization, collaboration, and reflection. Exactly. There's not... In order to fairly assess your son or daughter's work, they have to have time to uh, show their best in those courses. And, we, and you can't assess four criteria. Most courses can't assess four criteria in three months. So it's not a fair assessment if we were to give a one to seven level in progress one. There is no levels in progress one, exactly. Progress two is where you'll see an overall level. The, right, so the rubric, so you will have this, which will show you, so on criterion B, you'll be able to see where they have hit so far in that course. And if I was looking at this, obviously, I, I'm not, I'm, this is just an example, but I would, I'd probably say, depending on the assignment, they're between a level four and a level five, depending on the assignment. And then criterion D, I would say that they're a level five within that criterion. So it will have highlighting, so you will be able to have feedback as to what they've done so far in that course and the assignments that they've done. But you'll see that criterion A and C haven't been assessed yet. So we can't give an over one, overall one to seven level because all four criteria have to have been assessed. Okay. 
So now for progress number two, you will see that all the rubrics are assessed. And you'll also see that it will be green highlighting. So now you'll be able to see if your child has progressed in those rubrics, or, sorry, in those criteria, or if maybe they've slipped a little and what is, what is that conversation that needs to happen. If this were to happen, you would know way before the report cards went out home, right? So teachers will communicate if your child is struggling in their course, struggling in a criteria, didn't do very well on an assessment, the teachers will communicate that before report cards go home. So the report cards should not be a surprise because the communication should have already been there. The report cards are now just giving you that full detail in a report card on an official document. Again, with this report card, PCR will have um, a report card that now shows the overall one to seven level, your approaches to learning skills, so that you have both the rubric and also the official transcript. My main, um, uh, I guess, tip for you or encouragement for you is to make sure you're focusing on what the descriptors say when you're having a conversation with your son or daughter. Um, the numbers tell you, yes, they, they inform you, but these descriptors are what's going to inform their progress within those criteria. They really tell you how to, how to help your son or, or daughter move up within that criteria, and that's what the teachers also focus on in their class, right? So when your, your son or daughter is getting feedback on their work, it's the teachers are making comments within these descriptors. Um, most courses will have also task-specific rubrics, so you might see your son or daughter come home with a, an assignment that has a fifth column, and that's what we call a task-specific rubric, and that just gives them more details about that task. These are the official overall rubric that they get assessed on for, for in the course. Again, LEAP electives will be on the Progress 2. You'll be able to see the organization, collaboration, and reflection, and life and learning. So final report card, which is in July, um, you'll see a level one to seven, the approaches to learning grade and an advisor comment. This will only be posted to PCR. So you will not get an email from your advisor teacher with a report card in July. It will be posted to PCR um, and then you access through parent por portal to see that final report card. So the final report card um, will look like this. You'll see, and this is the final, but you'll also see progress one, two, and three so that I can show you all the different elements to the report card. So progress one, you'll see the approaches to learning has organization, collaboration, and reflection. And you can see um, the E, R, U, or M, depending where they, uh, what they received within that ATL. You can see for progress two that they have the same for the ATL, and now they have their level of achievement for those courses. So you can see that we have an example of the four courses. For progress three, which is part of the final report card, you'll see that they will also get l final levels in each of their subject areas for each of their criteria. We're only demonstrating one here as an example. And then they'll have a final for their ATL and a final level. So you'll be able to see their progression throughout the year on their ATL skills and also on their final level from progress two, three, and the final. Any questions about that? Down below here, which I'll show you an example, will be where the advisor comment is. Hundred percent. So what we're showing you here in English, let's say there was a five, three, seven, five here. That should equal the same for their final as it would here. What we're just showing you is the individual breakdown for each of the criteria so you can see where your son or daughter hit with each of those criteria. Yeah. So it's just it's it's nice to know if they got, you know, a level seven in criteria C and what is C 
you know, wh why did they excel in that criteria? And you can refer back to the Progress 2 report card it, to see that information and to see if they've progressed from Progress 2, um, what was their movement up, because you'll be able to have that as a reference. So that's why we break it down like that. It was feedback from parents last uh, two years ago that they said they would they they like to know the final, but they also like to know in July at the very end of the year how they're doing in each criteria for each of their subjects. And then this is just a sample of an advisor report. There's gaps because. I've taken out the student's name, um, just if you're wondering why it looks like that. Um, and the advisor report is an overall report on the child's uh, learner profile, their uh, MyCAS activities, their approaches to learning skills, uh, goals that they've set throughout the year and how they achieve them, or maybe they uh, reflected on them and revised them and they're a goal for the next year and also about their social interactions, so their social emotional learning, their, their friendships, how they get along with others. It's an overall uh, advisor comment that will be part of Progress 2 and the final report card. So I just wanted to uh, go back and just refresh on the MYP general grade boundaries. This is something at the other open door that I went through as well with uh, understanding MYP assessment. But I think it's just important to um, refer to this, and we're also going to use this when we break into our activity. But the boundary guidelines here are for the subject areas. So uh, if we went back to um, the report card here, and as I said, if there was levels for each of those criteria, the teacher then uses those levels to come up with an overall uh, level in their course, which then corresponds to an overall IB grade. And you can see that, again, there's descriptors for those overall IB grades. So a level three, there's a clear descriptor of what the student is able to do if they're achieving a level three. And it's also, again, as I said, if focusing on the descriptors is the best for a student's progress, it also says what a level four would be. So setting an attainable goal to get a level four, the student working with the teacher, working with parents, can now understand what they need to do to move up a level to achieve that for next year or the next report card. And as I said, we'll work uh, with these in our activities, so you'll be able to look at those more closely. I wanted to show you this. Um, I was, I'm always a little hesitant to show this because we don't use that, the letter grades anymore, but um, I think it's a really good um, d uh, chart to reference and show parents. And this shows um, the descriptors here are the ministry descriptors for what they consider an A, a B, a C plus, a C, a C minus, an I. And we've aligned them to the equivalent of the IB level. So you can see that an A is equivalent to a level 5, 6, and so on. What I really want to point out here is if you take a moment to read these descriptors, uh, let's say we read the descriptor for the C, the C plus. And then if we go back to the IB descriptors and read what a level three and four are, you can see how much more detailed and clear the IB descriptors are, how much more information they are giving you to inform you about your child's achievement within those courses. Um, and we just wanted to point this out because it's really important that um, you can see how the IB really extends the child's learning because they're able to really give that feedback. Students are able to see what they need to do to achieve a higher level. Um, and they focus on the skill development, the com communication, quality transfer from one course to another, what they're learning, and the critical thinking and creative thinking. If we go back to the ministry, 
you can see that the student demonstrates good performance in relation to expected learning outcomes for the course or subject and grade. It doesn't really tell us much, right? So it's not allowing uh, you to support your son or daughter in their progress within their academics because it's not really telling you much that you can help them set goals with. Where the IB descriptors, again, if we go back, it's telling you that communicates basic understanding of many concepts and contexts with occasional significant misunderstandings or gaps. Well, right here, we can see that, okay, well, they're obviously not adding all the detail that they need. They're missing main aspects to those concepts. And now the conversation can happen with your child. The conversation can happen with the teacher. And we can really start breaking down those goals and setting attainable ones for the student in order to achieve a higher level or increase their uh, achievement within that level. Okay, and this is again just a refresher slide from my last presentation, but um, it's one of my favorite slides, so you might see it every time I present. Um, <laughs> but how do you make sense of each level? And I think this just is a great way to break it down um, and really think about what that means with each level. So, you know, the level one, two is the state, level three, four is the describe, five, six is the explain, seven, eight is the analyze and evaluate. It's just a great way to break it down when you're having those conversations with your son or daughter or with your son or daughter and their teacher at the student-led conferences so that you can help them achieve their goals that they want to set and, and attain. So we're going to move into the activity. And I'm hoping that this will just kind of pull it together a little bit. Um, you can either be in pairs as you are sitting, groups of three. Um, I'll leave it up to you how you want to work that out. And I will come around with a little package for each group, and then I'll explain the instructions on it. <laughs> 